Hello everybody, Raspberry Barrel here, and we're back at it again to read another biography of Muni. And today we'll be reading another biography by Verify Hearts on DeviantArt. The biography we'll be reading today is Cassiopeia, the Star. So, not much else to say, let's just get into it. Please forgive me if I stutter, hesitate, or mispronounce anything, and for any noises in the background. Cassiopeia, the Star, gentle and wise, held the hearts of everyone with the stars in her eyes. Cassiopeia the Star Born 68 a.m., died 136 a.m. Reigned from 88 a.m. through 112 a.m. Spouse was Domitius Fields. Children, Andromeda Butterfly and Light Butterfly. Cassiopeia was born in spring in the year of 68 a.m. To Miranda and Seward Butterfly. She had inherited her mother's red hair and father's green eyes. She was born with bright yellow star marks on her cheeks that glowed at birth and a smile on her face. When she was a few days old, her cheek marks turned blue. No one knew the reason why. She was nicknamed the Star of the Kingdom. She was the youngest of her family with two older twin brothers that were eight years older than her. Their names were Fabius and Manuel. Like most siblings, the two of them picked on her for being the youngest. One occurrence of this to be remembered is when they had put glue in the princess's hair while she slept. When she woke up, her hair was matted and no one could wash the glue out. So a maid had to cut her hair. The result was a boyish haircut that landed at Cassiopeia's shoulders. The princess loved her hair and cried the entire time. For the next year, she wore a hood at all times, unless it was time for bed. Manuel and Fabius were forced to clean the whole royal stables by themselves as punishment for a month. She was considered beautiful, even at a young age, and her mother had many suitors from nobles and neighboring kingdoms asking for daughter's hand in future marriage. One in particular was one to her second cousin, Michael Silver. The grandson of her great-aunt, Celeste Butterfly, all offers were turned down by Miranda, who wanted her daughter to grow up and marry someone she loved on her own accord. Her love for the arts and music started when she was eight. After sneaking out of the castle, she watched a band of musicians perform. All the music performed at the castle was boring to her, but this. It sounded like it came from their hearts. She was caught by royal guards that were sent to fetch, fetch her, and when she got home, she asked her mother for permission to learn how to play the violin. Cassiopeia's practiced the violin every day with her instructor, so much so she stopped studying for the day she inherited the royal wand, which was coming closer and closer. Miranda told her if she didn't do something else besides play all the time, she would quit her lessons. In 50 a.m., Cassiopeia inherited the royal wand from her mother. It had an outer shape of a seven-pointed star, with the eighth point taken place by the wand's handle. There was even a smaller version of the star in the middle, surrounded by blue that shared the color of her cheek marks. It glowed consistently, and Cassiopeia was immediately enamored with it. She disappeared into the castle before the ceremony was officially over with so she could show it off. The day of the wand ceremony, she met Dominitus Fields, a minor noble boy who had been invited with his family. The two got along quite well right away. After talking for a while, Cassiopeia invited him back for tea the next week. When he showed up, Cassiopeia had dressed up extra nicely to show off. Dominitus was so mesmerized by her that he had accidentally knocked his cup over onto himself. He was so embarrassed that he thought she would never invite him back again, but Cassiopeia laughed at him and offered a set of clothes to wear. When she turned 15, Cassiopeia started following her mother to council meetings and events in order to learn more about her future duties as queen. After months of dating, Cassiopeia became pregnant with Dominitus's child. When Cassiopeia told her mother what happened, Miranda was disappointed. It was a bad image to get pregnant before marriage and before she was even crowned queen. Still, she loved her daughter and supported Cassiopeia. After hours of hard labor in the night of autumn of 85 a.m., Cassiopeia gave birth to her daughter, Andromeda. 
making Cassiopeia the first to have a child before being crowned, and making Andromeda the first to be born to a princess and not a queen. In 88 AM, Cassiopeia and Dominitus marry. It was the first time Cassiopeia had seen her mother cry so publicly. The ceremony was extravagant, as Cassiopeia was, with a honeymoon that was the longest of any monarchs at six months. She was crowned queen upon her return. Cassiopeia was invited by the current king of the Ponyhead Kingdom to join them in a feast with the small spider bite kingdom. This event led to the alliance with the spider bite kingdom to the butterflies. During her free time outside of duties, Cassiopeia spent her time with her daughters, teaching them basic magic that they could use without the royal wand. She knew that her daughters she knew that her daughter Light was jealous that her older sister Dromeda was the one who would inherit the crown and wand. By teaching both of her daughters magic, she believed it would make Light feel more even with her sister. At 101 a.m., Cassiopeia gave up the royal wand to Andromeda. The result was a handkerchief. All, all magic wands had before this had been, well, wands. This was the first time seeing the wand change to an object so strange, and would it be the last? Andromeda received her crown in 105 a.m. The princess, now queen, was disappointed that her grandmother, Miranda Butterfly, couldn't join them, as she had died a year before. Her only grandchild, Faye Butterfly, was born in 109 a.m., shortly after her daughter's marriage to Lovell Fisher. A tragic accident occurred in 116 a.m. Queen Andromeda had died in a shipwreck at the age of 31 years old. Her body had never been recovered or found and it left her only child and heir, Faye Butterfly, at the age of seven, the queen of, the, of Muni. At the age of 48 years old, Cassiopeia decided to take the position as queen of Muni once more. She couldn't bear to see her granddaughter reign at such a young age. The princess's father had perished alongside her mother and left Faye a broken girl. As best as a grandmother could, Cassiopeia tried to mend the broken heart of Faye, the child queen as she would be nicknamed. She gave up her crown once more to her granddaughter when Faye was 20, in the year 129 AM. She would also live to see her marry and give birth to her great-granddaughter, Crescenta the Optimistic, in 131 AM. Cassiopeia Butterfly died at the age of 68 of unknown causes. She, she was buried by the previous queens of the Butterfly Kingdom. And that was the biography of Cassiopeia the Star by Verify Hearts on DeviantArt. If you like this biography, please go check out Verify and all the rest of their amazing art and work they have to share. Thank you all for listening. Once more, I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you all next time. Goodbye!